Gradually, out of obscure causes, a personality is emerging. A teacher observes that young Adolf has a limited talent, but that he is lazy, bad-tempered, and arrogantly fancies himself a leader. Better than studies, he likes to walk here along the Danube near Linz, enthralls his only friend Kubizek with his dreams of being a great artist. Already he has redesigned the city of Linz. At 18, with boundless confidence and a portfolio of schoolboy sketches, young Hitler sets out to conquer Vienna. Certain his talent will open all doors, Hitler applies for admission to the Academy of Fine Arts. But he will walk its corridors only as a visitor. In a shattering and unexpected blow, he is rejected. No revolutionary in art, Hitler cannot meet the technical standards of the Academy. His sketches are pleasant, unoriginal, and uninhabited. He has difficulty drawing the human figure. In a cheap hostel at 27 Meldemannstrasse, Hitler sinks into a world of drifters and nobodies. Unwashed and gaunt, he sells an occasional crude poster, lives often in flop houses or even in the streets. In the angry voices of Vienna's restless minority groups, his discontent finds echoes. For the first time, Hitler senses the uses of hate, the explosive political force stored in the resentments and fears of the masses. His own hates are many, the Habsburgs' mongrel empire, parliamentary government, inferior races, perennial Jew. Antisemitism has always existed in Viennese society. But in Hitler, it takes on a new virulence. Is there, he writes, any form of foulness in which at least one Jew did not participate? In 1913, Hitler abruptly leaves Vienna for Germany, ending a shadowy period little known even to his one-time friend and confidant, Ernst Putzi Hanfstangel. I tried to find out about his Vienna days, about the Augarten and about, uh, well, the Vienna life and uh, the streets and so on. He would be shut up like a clam. <laughs> 